Joining us now is Leonard Trammell. Leonard is Vice President for Software Development at Atari, and next to Leonard, his father, Jack Trammell, Jack Chairman and CEO of Atari, and formerly the President of Commodore. Jack, you were, you were Commodore. You were a very important part of Commodore, obviously, several years ago when the low-cost calculator, 995 calculator, was introduced. What is your uh, ideas, what is your idea about marketing low-cost devices? Well, my idea is always to try to bring the best technology uh, at the lowest price to the masses. Mm -hmm. We are a company which we like to sell to the masses, not to the classes. <laughs> okay. But well, this, this particular uh, new introduction of the machine is, is a threatened, uh, I guess it threatens the mid-range computers, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, this particular machine, the 520ST, is an $800 machine, if I understand it correctly. Yes. It's a half a mega memory, a 68K processor, and a monochrome display. Now, that price point must have been a very difficult one to hit. How do you do that? Well, I mean, there's no question that it is always hard to come up with a new product. Uh, but knowing and understanding uh, the semiconductor business and knowing where the costs are going, you can always foresee uh, what you're going to be able to come out with. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, with no question, uh, it is feasible at the present time. Uh, to give you an idea, when we started developing this particular product, a uh, 256K RAM uh, used to cost $30. Today it's down to 4 <laughs> So you only have to mm -hmm. have a crystal ball and to be able to see it, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And for some reason we have that particular crystal ball. Now, how, much, uh, how, how much of an advantage do you have? Do you, do you build this offshore or is it built in the U.S.? Where is it? No, we do definitely have uh, in Atari. Uh, Atari has a uh, very large assembly plant in Taiwan. Mm -hmm and we are continuing assembling in Taiwan. But the parts, uh, most of them, come from the United States. They're shipped to Taiwan for assembly. So uh, more than 75% in this product is American-made. Mm -hmm. Give us an idea, Jack, of the cost in terms of figuring out what it costs to make that computer. How much does it cost, in fact, to put it together compared to how much does it cost to buy the parts? Uh, I would say that the assembly of the computer is about 2% of the cost. So, I mean, it's just a couple of bucks, basically, to build that computer. Well, it's saying. more than a couple of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned before you've had the unique ability to have this crystal ball and kind of guess at where prices are going. Has that been the difference? I mean, what happened to Coleco and TI and so on? Well, uh, I believe when it comes to Coleco, Coleco definitely uh, is a toy maker and they're very successful of manufacturing toys. And they were trying to apply the same technique into computers, and it didn't work because it was like a toy and they failed. Was this basically where they were selling the machines? Or you're selling, for example, in the, the Kmart, so for exa example, is that, is that a good place to sell computer systems or is it a good place to sell toys? I believe uh, that uh, Kmart is selling uh, video uh, and uh, sound systems for two, three thousand dollars. So uh, today Kmart is a department store which sells everything. Mm -hmm. And I believe that our customer is sophisticated enough that he knows the value, what he's getting, and he will try to get the best price at any retailer. Now, let's take, let's take for example, uh, what we call, let's say, the mid-range machines, or the more expensive machines um, that are being put into the office uh, environment right now. Now, how are, how are the, let's say, the 520 STs going to get into business if they're, say, sold through the Kmart? Do you see that happening, first of all, or do you see this being targeted at, at as a home market machine, mostly? No, we, uh, in Atari, uh, believe very much that we are manufacturing products for personal use. We call it personal computers. When I started the personal computer business in 1976, we call it a personal computer, and I'm still continuing. Now, it's up to the individual where he wants to carry this computer to. Mm -hmm. He can have it in his home, and he can have it in his office, he can have it in the lab, anywhere. But it's up to him. I do not dictate to him where he's going to take it to. Gary, we've been talking about the ST, and I know everybody's excited about the ST. I'd like to turn to Leonard, and Leonard, describe the, the new computer and give us a little bit of what it does. Well, the description Gary gave a moment ago, it's a, a half a megabyte, 68,000 based processor. Uh, the unique things about the machine are the high resolution color graphics. We're looking now at the 640 by 200 display and a familiar looking uh, <laughs> opening screen where you have uh, a window which you can resize and move around and various 
files that happen to be on this disk and you can take the icons and move them around and access a disk drive uh, in a, a manner which should be familiar to uh, sophisticated users by now and hopefully will be, uh, will be familiar to other people in a very short length of time. So as, as a practical matter, Leonard, as you suggest, when we look at this, this looks more or less, if you'll allow me, like a color Macintosh and essentially a color fat Mac with the, with the 512K, right? Yes. And, and, and what price is this going to be sold at? Well, this with a monochrome display instead of this color uh, and one disk drive will be about $800. Okay, now how do you see the software, uh, the evolution of the software? This, this could be, if this was a big thing, for example, how many, how many of these do you think you're going to sell, just as a, a rough guess? Well, uh, the market definitely this year is softer than it was last year, mm -hmm. but we still believe that we'll be able to sell more than a million of those computers this okay. year. Okay. Now, if you sell numbers like that, that's going to obviously be a very important place for, for software vendors to sell their software. Uh, how do you see that whole software evolution taking place in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the low-cost computers? Well, uh, in the company which I founded uh, and I was working previously in, uh, when I came out with the Commodore 64 and there was no software, everybody was telling me how difficult it will be to sell a computer which has no software. Mm -hmm. Even at $199. <laughs> uh, yes. And there's no question that the majority of third-party software people has seen the value in the computer and they've also seen that people are going to buy them. And uh, during uh, the time when I was there, before I left, we were uh, selling as many as 300,000 computers a month. And with no question that Commodore today has a, one of the biggest libraries of software available. Now the, the, but the Commodore 64, the C64, did take some time before that software really uh, started to appear on the market. It, it must have been uh, a, year a, a year and a half. Okay. Right. Now, is there, is there any way that you see that that, could, that can be uh, accelerated, say, with the 520, or is it just going to be a natural phenomenon? People no. are interested in the Mac-like interface, and as a result, we're going to see... I believe it's going to be faster <laughs> because there are definitely many, many more software, uh, third-party software mm -hmm. houses out there and there's quite a bit of software being written at the present time for the Mac mm -hmm. and for that reason it's, it's quite easy to port over the software to our machine and I believe it will not take 18 months, it will take quite a bit faster but we, when we come out, when we will introduce the machine and start selling the product we will have between 25 and 30 major pieces of software with it. Jack, what, who do you see as your competition? Is it Apple? Is it the new machine out of Commodore? This, to, to me it's uh, everybody's competition but specifically for the ST line it is Apple today. Uh, the Commodore machine I did not see yet, so I cannot um, uh, say anything about it yet. How about the Japanese? As far as the Japanese is concerned, I, I was uh, able to keep those people out uh, of the U.S. market and almost from the world market for the past seven years. And I really do not see them coming in. They didn't even come into the 8-bit line. Uh, I do not know how they're going to be able to come into the 16-bit. Uh, the Japanese are known to be able to be a very strong competitors almost in every field, especially in electronics. And the reason why they were able to compete is because the manufacturers, like the automobiles and, and other electronic manufacturers, were making very substantial, very substantial profits. And that gave them an opportunity to come in here, reduce the price, come out with very good quality, and the world market that the American public bought it. What I'm trying to do is to come out with the best product, with the best quality, and also with the best price. And by doing so, I keep those people out. Mm -hmm. And thanks God, well, I'm successful so far. Well, the uh, C64 was, was uh, definitely um, one of those devices that kept uh, the Japanese machines out. Stuart, users groups are where a lot of the grassroots computing is, is, it actually takes place. And a lot of times people think that uh, uh, the users groups are going to accept less qualities in their software. Uh, it, this is a phenomenon that happened around the Commodore 64, I believe, is that, that really there was an acceptance of a lower quality software. Uh, do you think this is really true nowadays? Can you sell a computer into the home jack and have it really, uh, you know, low quality software or is it going to have to all be really good stuff? I believe it has to be all good stuff. I mean, the, the, the consumer is more sophisticated, he's seen more, he understands more, he uh, almost has graduated. Uh, mm -hmm. There's quite a few people now which uh, have computers in their hands for the past eight years. I'm talking about low-end computers. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are demanding more. 
Jack, where are you going to sell this? You know, there was criticism at Commodore about uh, going out of the computer retailers and into the Toys R Us and Kmart and so on. This is a, a, a sophisticated machine. What's your plan for retailing? My answer to your question always is, whoever has money <laughs> will be able to sell it, whoever can pay for it. But uh, the truth is that I am looking for a very broad distribution. The uh, computer retailer uh, definitely uh, serves uh, a certain purpose. Uh, he holds hands with people, with business people and others which do not know how to operate a computer. We are selling this computer to people which have knowledge. We are selling it to the youth, to the people, to the kids from the age of 6 to 26, which were trained in school, they've learned computing. It is not strange to them. They know more about computers than the clerk which sells it to them. So for their reason, that can be sold almost anywhere. And I'm looking to sell it through mass market or anybody else which wishes to pay for it. Now, how about, uh, how about training programs? This is a point you brought up. If you're going to sell through the Kmarts and so forth, you, uh, I don't know what, ex what experience you had with the C64, but uh, are you, are you going to have special programs for the people that are actually selling the machine? We will have programs not only for the people which are selling the machine, but for the people which are buying the machine. Mm -hmm. Uh, we hope to be able to have programs right on the disk which they're going to be able to read off this particular new ST model which is going to be very easy for them. The whole intention of coming out with the ST line was to make it a more powerful and a easier, a simpler machine to use. By having in this computer can actually teach the owner how it should be used. Okay, now this, this is a good point because you're, now if you're, gonna, you're, you're obviously targeting then, let's say, into the home market with, a, with a, a training program of that sort. What do you see as being really uh, specifically different about a home computing than, let's say, a business-oriented computer? How, how can you make it successful in the home where, let's say, um, uh, some other attempts have not been successful? Uh, this, this particular product, in my opinion, is a stronger product than the present IBM PC which is being used in offices. Mm -hmm. So I believe by giving this computer into the hands of the youth, those are the kids which are growing up and going to be in the offices in the f of the future. And if they can learn how to use it at home, right, they're mm -hmm. going to be buying it in the future. In the so office. do you see it as, as uh, some, of these, some of the directions that may be important is uh, around uh, educational use, for example? With no question. Mm -hmm. uh, education is going to be very important. We're going to have a number of different programs to the schools uh, starting almost immediately because we are now telling and we will be telling the public in the educators that this is a fourth generation computer now it was beautiful to have the Commodore the PET and the 64 and the Apple II but the ST is the future in the computing business and it's important to teach the kids t on today's computers not on yesterday's computers